AK equations with algebraic fractions. Um, there's a couple ways to do this, so I encourage you to go and have a look at the textbook explanations and even the textbook video because there's more than one way to solve these. So I'll, I'll just try and show you, uh, I think, the ones that are going to make the most sense, uh, but there's definitely more ways to look at it. So uh, if we have more than one fraction, multiply both sides by the lowest common denominator. We can do that. Alternately, we can express each fraction using the same denominator, then simplify by adding and subtracting and solving. So I'm going to, for the first one here, I'm going to use uh, the idea of equivalent fractions. So uh, I need to have the same denominator, and I've got 2x over 3 plus x over 2 equals 7. So the lowest common denominator of um, these two fractions is going to be 6. So I'm going to create equivalent fractions. Uh, I'm going to multiply uh, 2x over 3 by 2. So if I did that, I would get 4x's over 6. So that is an equivalent fraction. So it's the same thing. I haven't changed anything, but I've got a 6 on the bottom. Now, I just have to be careful. What do I multiply 2 by to get a 6 on the bottom? And that's going to be 3. So that'll give me 3x over 6, and that equals 7. So now I've got the same denominator. Uh, one really good way, I think, to think about it is to take this. Because you are doing um, 4x's plus 3x's, you're actually doing 4x plus 3x over 6. And that gives us a really good, clear uh, indication that we can multiply both sides by 6. So I've got 4x plus 3, uh, I should write it out, 4x plus 3x's equals uh, 42, isn't it? So of course, we can add those together. 7x's is 42, and then 1x is to divide by 7. Sorry if I'm skipping steps here. Uh, so x will equal 6. Uh, so over here on B, B we've got uh, a 5 and a 3 on the bottom. So our, our lowest common denominator, which is the same as saying lowest common multiple, is going to be 15 between 5 and 3. And I, I can multiply them together to get a multiple. So to get a 15 on the bottom of both of them, right? Uh, I'm going to multiply 5 times 3. So I've got to multiply the, the numerator as well as the denominator. So they're both being multiplied by 3, or 3 over 3, which is to say 1 in a special fancy term. And 3 times 5, so that'll be 5 times whatever that is on, it is on the top. 5 times x minus 1. Now, it could be really fancy. Oops, equals. <laughs> My fancy thing, if this confuses you, forget about it. If I were to do that, so 15 over 15 is actually 1, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I've multiplied that by 15 as well. Then I could ignore all this and just write 3x minus 2 minus 5x minus 1 equals 15. But for the sake of the argumentes, I'm going to go back and keep that as a 1. So now I'm going to think of the same thing as um, like I did over here. I've actually got 3x is minus 2 minus 5x is over minus 1. All of that can be over 15. So if I multiply everything on this side by 15, I multiply everything on that side by 15, <gasps> look what happened. I've got 3x minus 2 minus 5. This is so sloppy. Sorry. x minus 1 equals 15. Just the same as I had a minute ago. So now I've got 3x's. Got to be careful here. 3 times 2 is negative 6. And I've got minus 5x's. And here's where i got to be careful. Negative 5 times negative 1 is actually going to give me a plus 5 equals 15. Uh, I'll gather my terms together. 3x minus 5x's gives me negative 2x's. And then negative 6 plus 5 is a minus 1, isn't it? That'll equal 15. And then I add 1 to both sides to get rid of that minus 1, and that gives me negative 2x equals 16. And then if I divide, how do I get a positive x? I divide by negative 2 to get positive x, so I'll divide by negative 2 to get negative 8, which is the answer for x. Now, for this one here, our lowest common denominator, or our lowest common multiple, 2x, 3x, is actually going to be 6x. So our lowest common denom is going to be equal to 6x. So what we can do here is we can multiply. We could multiply absolutely everything by 6x. So let's try it this way. So 5 over 2x times 6x minus 4 over 3x times 6x equals 2 times 6x. So everybody in the world is being multiplied by 6x. Where I can, uh, between 6x's and 2x's, I can 
get a factor of just plain old 3. 5 times 3 is 15. Because we can cancel out the 6, uh, divide 2 gives us 3, and x divide x gives us 1. So that's effectively gone. Minus, and what can I cancel out over here? If I divide 6x's by 3x's, I get just plain number 2. 4 times 2 is 8. So that's one way to do it, and that will equal 6 times 2 is 12x's. Okay, so let's keep that idea going. 15 minus 8 is 7 equals 12x's, and divide that by, I'll just flip sides because it's convenient, uh, because if they equal, if the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, then I can flip them around, and I'll do 7 over 12. So for this last one, there's an easy way and there's a complex way. Which one do you want to do? The complex way, I didn't give you a choice, did I? So the complex way is to find um, the lowest common denominator would actually be x plus 1 times x plus 4. So the complicated way is I multiply, if I'm going to get something over um, x plus 1 times x plus 4, then I've got to multiply the 3 times x plus 4. And that's going to equals, equals the same thing I've got over here, uh, x plus 4, I'll uh, call it x plus 1 because that's what the order was before, and I've got it, already got the x plus 4, so I've got to mul multiply the 2 by the x plus 1, was it? Yes, it was. I can simply end up with, I can pretend these don't exist because if the uh, denominators are the same, then the numerators are going to be equal to each other, which is 3x plus 4 is going to be equal, just like we did with ratios. I didn't even finish that. Gosh, how lazy. So that's going to end me end up with me getting to that position, where 3 times x plus 4, and then we just solve it, we expand our brackets, and blah, 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 blah. But, aha, we also can do this, and this is what I would suggest, is we can do this by cross-multiplying. Because if I want to, I can multiply both sides by x plus 1, so that would give me 2 uh, times x plus 1 over x plus 4, and then I'd multiply both sides by x plus 4, getting rid of that. So, essentially... I multiply this by that, and this by that, and I get 3 times x plus 4 is equal to 2 times x plus 1, which is startlingly similar to what I ended up when I did that over there. So cross-multiplying is just kind of doing two steps at the same time. We know that we're going to be multiplying both sides by x plus 4 to cancel that, and we know that we're going to be multiplying both sides by uh, x plus plus 1 to cancel that. So we just do it. We just do it in one fell swoop. And then we expand our brackets. 3 times x plus 3 times 4 is 12 equals 2 times x plus 2. We get all our x's on one side. 3x let's minus 2x's gives us x minus 2x's plus 12 equals 2. And of course uh, we subtract 12 from both sides gives us x equals negative 10. And again, I encourage you to go and have a look at the textbook because the textbook outlines uh, different options uh, that all end up doing the same thing.